Hi guys, welcome to the first bonus lesson of the Coffee Cup project here. My name is Helge Maus from Pixel Train. In this bonus lesson, I want to talk about the classic workflow inside of Substance Painter 2020 and also how you can make these texture maps working. And for this, we start with the coffee cup where we left last time. And if you have seen the coffee cup module one completely, you've seen that I suddenly had texture maps for the last lesson. And I told you that you can get them on Gumroad for a really small fee to support this channel and also our work here. But I want to show you now how to make them. And like I said, I want to work in Substance Painter 2020, but in the classic workflow. I also want to show you some caveats and problems which you run into if you laid out your UVs in UDIMS and then suddenly you need to go to the classic workflow. So I hope it's useful for all of you. So let's get started and take a look what we have here. Let's dive into the cup and you see here, this is our cup and I start here with this material assignment node here. So let's do that here and I press spacebar F to frame this thing here. And you see here in this material node, we assigned five materials to our coffee cup. Sometimes I do that here for creating dummies and to trigger texture sets and other applications. But here in this case, these are real materials, which I later want to use in a really classic workflow. For this, we generated the groups and I assigned here materials. And you see, we have a subnet here, a material network where we place these mantra materials. So if you dive in, here are these materials, which have, because this is a bonus lesson and we finished the project in the last lesson of module one, we have the textures here, but we generate them now. Then we subdivided the whole cup a little bit more so that we have enough resolution for a low poly version. And this ROB FBX here was the low poly resolution which we generated. We use the ROB FBX to output FBX files. Make sure that you only render the current frame. I always deactivate export in ASCII format because I saw that sometimes I get flipped UVs and things like that. So I found it useful to deactivate that. And if I now click here, save to disk, this low poly FBX is now saved to disk and I can use it now. Then we need a high poly version of the whole thing for later baking, for example, to get a smoother surface, you want to have normals and so on. And I generated it here inside of Houdini. A typical production workflow would be to now take this low poly version and place it in an application like ZBrush, for example, or 3D code or Matbox, paint a little bit of details onto the surface, and then you get a really high and dense mesh. And you use this then as a high poly version, which you then bake out to the low poly version. But in our case, we subdivided the thing a little bit more here two times. So it looks now like that here. If you want, you can make some corrections here, smooth the surface out or whatever, or you add details here. And then I outputted the whole thing with the ROB FBX again, same settings here as the high poly mesh. So save this to disk and that's it. So now we can switch over to Substance Painter. That's the 2020 version. And I go here into this file here, uh, which I loaded and I want to show you a little problem. If you work in the classic workflow, and I will talk about this in a moment, you have a texture set for every of your materials. You see here, cup lid, paper, bottom, inside, outside, and so on. So this is the classic workflow, which we use to work. So for every dummy material you have here, your texture set, you select your texture set, and then you get a layer stack here under layers, which you then can use and paint. There's one little caveat in the classic workflow in this version of Substance Painter, which I want to show you so that you don't run into problems. I baked out all the maps here. So the maps are here under project, like I've shown you before. These are 30 uh, maps, so I don't want that you wait now here. And I split it here in my view so that you can see the 3D and the 2D view. And you see that you only see the UVs at the moment uh, of the texture set which you are on. So paper outside, paper ridge, and so on. It's the same like in Houdini. Let's switch for a short moment to Houdini. And I select here my subdivide again. And I press spacebar 5 here. And you see, 
that we've prepared a UDIM workflow because it's much easier to work like this. You have here the standard UV space where you have the paper, the bottom and the ridge. And then we have on the next segment here in the UV, so the next UDIM, this cafelet here and this is the thing you exported it nothing wrong with that but you will see let's go back to the substance painter here that we run into a problem if we now try to paint something on it let's take the cafelet and you see that this here is now outside of the painting area of substance painter so it is absolutely correct but it's moved across here and if you now I've selected it try for example to paint something on it I take here a paintbrush this is a paint layer here and I now try to paint something here on the lid you will see it doesn't work at all it also doesn't work if you paint here but if you go in here and make for example a fill layer so let's take this paint bucket here so we have a fill layer and this fill layer is always set here to repeat and now we say I want to fill with red you suddenly see everything works the reason for this is the tiling here so it's not so obvious where the problem is you have to keep in mind if you want to work in the classic workflow with your texture sets which are defined by material you have to make sure that all your UVs here are placed in the UV standard space. How to change this now in Houdini without destroying your work. You go here into your tree and the problem was the lid so here's the couplet and if you now go here to the layout you see the thing we have done here let's activate this and press the B key. The thing was that the original sorry B key over the viewport that the original UVs were placed here. You, you maybe see them here. Let's deactivate here the background really fast. Here they are. And then with the help of the UV layout here, we moved them across with the help here of the targets. So what we do now here is I press now the B key to bypass this node. And so these UVs are still placed in this area here. Now we merge streams. So we have this here, which is the paper, and this here, which are the cafelet pieces. And if you now merge them, they are placed on each other. Oh, overlapping UVs? No, because I know that later in the material section, I use them in steps. So I never use the same thing here again. So they are different now and now I have to export this here again so I go here now to the Rob FBX I save this to disk I click here save this to disk and you see how cool is that if you have a procedural application like this here and I press the save key only to come back later to that and now I go here to the substance painter you can override the model here by going to edit project configuration and try to read this here again but I do it now the classic way so let's go to new and now we can start to make a classic approach also inside of Substance Painter 2020 let's go through the things I go here to file and say select and I now select my low poly version of the cup okay here it is I select here my document resolution 2K is enough because you've heard in my last session where I explained a lot about Substance Painter that Substance Painter works procedurally. So if you export later 4K, 8K, it recalculates all the substances. Only thing which can't be calculated are the baked maps and also every bitmap which you brought in and projected because we don't have that resolution anymore. So this is something you have to keep in mind. But 2K for working resolution is fine. I want to have OpenGL here. And now in the new Substance Painter 2020, you will see here that we have this new area here. And you have here also a selection. So if you want to work with UDIMs, you have to click here, use UV tile workflow. And the new option is then preserve UV tile layout. So it takes the layout which you have per material 
and you can paint across the tiles. This was a limitation which I talked about in one of the last sessions where I talked about Substance Painter. So this is solved. You also can work in the old workflow. So this is still ticked and you go here and then every UV tile and we have two of them are then a texture set for us. But then we lose our texture sets which are based on the dummy materials. You remember we have five texture sets and we lose them. Then we only have two maps later and one is for the first texture set and one is for the second texture set. So this is not so useful in my case. And so I deactivate this now here to have a really classic workflow. Everything is a material and every material will be a texture set. That's it. I click now OK here and we don't have to save this problem file and now we can take a look here. So our cup is there and now take a look into the UVs and now you see the overlapping is gone. Why? Because you only see one texture set. So if you open now this window here, you see by our material assignment we have a texture set list, cuplet is that here. And you see here the UV. If we now go to the paper outside, for example, you see it's placed in the same area here, which we can paint, but it's not overlapping because it's for the material paper outside. So there are no duplications here. And this is the thing you have to check. Yeah. So if you go to the paper outside, you see nothing there, which makes a problem later. And yeah, the couplet, which would overlap here, is not in the same material like this here. And now we can start painting. And we go here now to the 3D view and then we have to bake. For this we go into the texture set settings here. Uh, you remember that they always depend here on the texture set but you see some new stuff here in the moment. So let's go here first. Then we go here to the baker. We talked about this before. And then we go here to the common section, which is now a little bit lower here. And the first thing we now decide is in which output size we want to do that. And in our case, we want to have 4K. Why? Because maybe I want to export later the whole stuff as 4K. And like I've said, these maps are not procedurally rebaked. So you have to do it by hand. So I bake it now on 4K. And so I have a little bit of buffer. Then we add here a high definition mesh. And like I've told you, the low poly mesh is exported from Houdini, placed into programs like ZBrush. There you add details and all this stuff. And then you export from there the high poly mesh with all the details. And then you can place it here and you bake these details then down to the low poly mesh. In our case, we take our high poly mesh here, which is this one. And then we say, here it is. I've talked about the cage and all the stuff in my introduction to Substance Painter, so we don't need that. But what we want to do is we go to anti-aliasing here and we set this to 2x2 two two to get rid of artifacts later. And this will take some time because instead of one pixel, it has to bake four pixels. So it takes four times more time. Then we activate what we want. I don't need ID maps. The rest is okay. You see with this icon here, this is using the high poly object for this baking process, which is fine. And then there's a really important difference now to the old Substance Painter, which is here. You may remember that I told you in the earlier lesson that you have to decide if you only want to bake the texture set which I'm on. You remember that we selected here texture set and these texture set settings which we started here to open the baker is only one of these five sets. And in the older version, when you clicked bake selected texture set, you only bake this one. In our case, this is now different because the third button is now gone, bake all texture sets. Instead of that, it says bake selected textures. So where's the selection? You can't select something here anymore. You have to go here to the selections. And here you see here you can decide which of the texture sets you want to bake. In our case, everything. Yeah, and that's it. Now we click bake textures and it will take a while. Then we start painting. See you in a moment. So welcome back. It took a while. You see we've baked out 30 maps here. So for every texture set, we have our stack with the standard maps. And if you want to check them, you can go here to project and you see them all here. 
And what you also can do, and this is a really cool thing, is you remember that you have here a drop down where you have the material, but you also can see here the mesh map. So if you, for example, want to see the curvature map, you can switch this on here. And so this is the curvature map, for example, or the thickness map, and so on. So uh, you can check here what you get as a result. And normally we use that here for searching for problems, but we hope that we don't have any problems. So go back here or press the M key and now we can start working. So let's go back here to our texture set list. And the first thing I want to do here is I want to work with the lid. So I make sure that I've selected it. And this is also a funny thing which I found that yeah people will run into problems. Let's do one thing. You remember that I selected here the couplet. Okay. And what we do now is we take a paintbrush here and we can start painting here on the lid. But if I try here now to paint on the paper section here, you see it doesn't work. And this is something you have really to keep in mind. You can paint over UDIMs here, but you can't paint over texture sets. So it's still the same thing like in the older versions of Substance Painter. So you have to select your texture set here, which you want to paint on. And I haven't tested it, but yeah, let's test it. If I select here now everything and now paint here, you see, yeah, it doesn't do the thing here. It only paints in this area here. So still the same limitation like before. We start with the couplet, like explained before, this layer here is now junk, but we want to start really easy with a plastic. So let's go here to my materials. And I've talked about these materials in my introduction to Substance Painter. So same thing here, we look here through. If you want, you can go into the materials category and say, I search something which is named plastic. You see here some plastics. And I try to use this here. And what's really cool is you can now drag it here on the lid, but you also can drag it here in the other texture sets. So here the limitation of the texture sets is not there when you drag and drop it, but not in painting. So we drag it here, make that. And now we have here fill layer and then we can select this layer which we've painted on and click here, the garbage bin. Okay. Next thing is now we think about which color and which look we want to have. So this is a fill layer, it's procedural, so select this. And then you remember we have here under the properties here, the fill options. I think the color is nice. I want to have it a little bit more here greenish here. So go a little bit more into the green. And then we activate it beside of the color, the roughness and the metalness. And what we now can do is we can make it a little bit more rough. You remember that you can rotate your environment by holding down the shift key and the right mouse button here. So you can rotate here to see what light is doing with the surface. But I think the look here is okay. If you want to know more about this, take a look into my introduction. So this here is done. If you want, you can now make some imperfections, but yeah. Let's switch now to the paper part, which is the outside. Okay, now we are here again. Now we can paint on it, yeah. And what we now do is I need a paper here. So let's get rid here of the filter. And if you try now to enter paper, you don't see anything with paper. And lucky enough that Adobe has a substance source. So I've downloaded from their uh, archive. If you own Substance Painter and you have a subscription, you can directly go to Substance Source and look for the right material. And I found one which I downloaded it. So I import it here now into my resources. I go now here and I've placed it in my project so that I have everything together, external files. And here are the substances which I use or tested it. So here I take an archive. So SBS stands for Substance Painter and AR stands for the archive. This is the thing we need here. So I had two papers and I decided I want to use this cardboard underscore paper. This looked nice. So I import that here. 
then you have to decide where you want to place it in your shelf. It's a uh, base material, so I do that. And then you have to decide in this area here how long you want to use it. So if you are testing, current session is exactly what you want, but you also can place it inside of the Substance Painter file. So if you give the file away, this substance is also part of it and you can place it in the shelf forever. So in our case, I want to place it in the project. So I select that here and say import. And now here is the cardboard and I use drag and drop here to directly drop it on my cup. I think it's a little bit too, yeah, brownish. So what you can do is now I take here my fill layer again and I go here into the materials options. Let's go here to color and bring it into a more grayish, darker appearance here, not so saturated. What's really cool about that here is you can change the fiber intensity so we can have some fibers. And if you add this here, you see, ooh, this looks really big. So how to change that? If you want to change here the placement, it's the same like in a 3D program. You manipulate the UVs. We have UVs here. You can now scale them here. And if you go here to the fill options, you see here's a projection. We use our UV map, UV projection. If you want to, sorry, can switch here the 2D view on so that you see it. So this here is now the standard placement of the whole thing. And you see here this manipulator. If you don't see it, you can activate and deactivate it here so that you can move your pivot, move the whole thing here around if you like. And you see you manipulating these data here. If you hold here a mouse button here outside, you can rotate the whole thing. You can scale it non-proportionally. And if you hold on shift proportionally. So it's really like in every Adobe program. So that's fine here. If you want to reset, you have here reset changes. That's good. So you come back here to the original state. And you also have different projections. So if you don't have a nice UV map, you can use triplanar and so on. So now a KCV is okay. I change now the scale to three. And one little tip here in Substance Painter, don't use the tab key if you want to leave here because tab key means full screen. Yeah. So what I do is if you enter a value, press the enter key. And now you see this area is smaller and also the paper is now smaller here. I think that's nice. And if we want, you can also change the roughness here. Let's go back to 3D. And I like here the appearance of the roughness. Let's look around. I think that's, yeah, okay. Nice. And now you can go around the whole thing. Here is the bottom part. I take cardboard again, drop it here. And let's think about that. I think they want to make it dark. If we want to have the same paper, don't forget the scale. So that's the same. And we want to have it really rough here. And the inside here, which we see a little bit here, let's drop it here, is whitish because, yeah, it looks more clear. And it's really reflective because, yeah, maybe there's a coating on it so that you have the feeling that it's resistant against water. If you want to get rid here of something, we can go here to the lid, for example. I want to get rid of the ridge and the lid. And so you can now look inside of that and also check this here if you like. So you see. It's really cool to have these texture sets here as a helper for your work. Last thing we want to do is I want to project the logo, which Karen has done for us. So I want to use this design here. So for this, we make sure that we are on the paper outside again. So otherwise you can't project. Same thing like painting. So drag and drop works, but for everything else, painting, projecting on something, you have to make sure the texture list selection is done here. And now we can start projecting. For this, we need the logo. So let's go here to the resources again. Import, you also can work with drag and drop if you like. And here are two logos which we can use. I take this one here. It has an alpha around this, so that's great. I bring this in. 
Then we say this here is a texture and we want also to have it in our project. And now we see that it is here. And then we can make here a new paint layer. So click here the paintbrush and we say this is the logo. Great. And then we can select here our projection tool. The moment you do that, you get this white area here, which is the projection. And you have in the properties here, the projection properties. To get a little bit more the idea of what's going on, remember that this here is the brush, then here is the alpha for the brush. And if we project, I want to paint without any alpha. So what you can do is you can select here the alpha. Instead of selecting one here in this quick menu, you also can say goodbye, any alpha, then you get this broad stroke here. Then we can go here now to the things we want to add here. And you remember here that everything which you do in a Substance Painter is material, so you can change here the height, the roughness, and so on. But I only want to add here color, so I deactivate everything. This is the color here which you want to add. And now we can go into the projection here and we take our logo and drag it here to the color. So that's it. Now we take this information here and place it in the color of this layer here. Now we see this stencil here. And what we now have to do are two things. One thing is I need my cap in an orthographic view. Otherwise, you see the perspective uh, while I'm projecting. So to do that, what we can do, let's go here back to the paint for a moment, is you can switch here under this cube here to an orthographic view. So if you do that, you see it looks strange, but if you now look from the side, you don't have perspective anymore here on it. That's the big advantage. And while you're navigating, you can also hold down the shift key and you see that then Substance Painter snaps. And so we snap exactly to the right side. I want to place the logo in this area where the drinking is. And I hold down snap here, and then we can go back to our projection. And you see, yeah, the image is still there. And now you still move your cup here. We make it a little bit bigger, move it, but don't rotate it. And now we want to work with the stencil. So press the S key here for stencil. And then you have here a quick menu which helps you to work. So while you have S pressed, you can with the middle mouse button pen, with the left mouse button rotate this. But what we want is we want the right mouse button to zoom it. And I zoom it until I have here the size which I like. You see that this here is in the background so that I had a feeling where it is. And now you can place if you want your cup against the stencil. So you can work in two ways if you like. Yeah, and now we have it. And I've deactivated everything here. I have my brush and now I can start painting here over this area here to paint now my logo on the cup. Really nice. So now we have done everything which I wanted to show you here in Painter. Like I've said, if you want to know more, I have a full introduction to Substance Painter Made. Now we have to export the whole thing. And because this is the classic workflow, we will need now, or we, we hopefully get for every texture set here, uh, one set of textures. That's the idea. And to do that, we go here to File, Export Textures. This here is our export dialog. You see it's also a little bit different from the old one. So first go to the global settings here. I place my textures here on my hard drive. And what I do here is I go into my coffee project. And here under text, and do it again. We are here now, perfect. And we have here the classic folder which I used to make you the last lesson of the module. So let's make a new folder here. It's again Substance Classic 2020. So we know what we are doing now. We click Open and now we can look through here. We want to use the Metallic Roughness template. 
that's exactly how we worked. If you want to change that, here are different kind of templates, but yeah, this is the template which works fine. The principal shader of Houdini. Then we painted with 8-bit data, so no reason why I want to update this. If you have displacement going on and height, then you maybe switch and in the VFX workflow, I tend to use EXRs as I export and they are then in 32-bit. Uh, so this is done here. And then you can decide here what you want to export and now you see exactly what I'm after. For every of our materials, we get now one set of textures and here are the textures which are generated. You can activate and deactivate stuff here. If you say we haven't used emissive or whatever, you can deactivate it here or you can change here your template. But yeah, in our case, everything is fine here. And now I go here to export and we get 30 maps. And this will take a while. We can check here everything which is going on. We can open then our output directory. And here are now all our maps for the different materials. So you see the name of the material here. And now you can start connecting them and this is shown in the last lesson of the first module. So I hope you like this. Last word before we close this, really important. If you go here to, for example, the lid, which is that here, and open this here up. Let's try to find something where you can see it because this here is not so easy to check. For example, here, this normals here, you will see that uh, the UV layout is now different because what we've done here inside of Houdini was that we bypassed this UV layout node to place everything here on each other. So you have to now use these maps here, which we've outputted now at this moment in time so that they fit here exactly into these materials. So I hope you liked this bonus lesson. My name is Helge Maus from Pixel Train. If you have questions, please leave them in the comments. If you liked this tutorial, give me a thumbs up, subscribe. If you want to support me doing these tutorials, we have a Patreon where you can start with $1 a month with a Patreon if you like. And if you want to have the files here, you'll find them on Gumroad. So thanks a lot and see you next time.